Well, now for the best part of the show, undoubtedly, it is Talking Pint with our new GB Muzz Talking Pint glasses, which you can get on the website online, which after this interview, Neil Parrish may well choose not to do. I don't know. <laughs> Neil, though, welcome Cheers. to the programme, Neil Parrish. <laughs> now... <laughs> third generation farmer, dairy farming, dipped your toe a little bit into local politics, being a councillor, and then suddenly you and I arrive at the same time in Brussels European and Parliament, Strasbourg yes. as members of the European Parliament, me from UKIP, you from the Conservative Party. Hell of a, I mean, you know, having lunch in the members' dining room in Strasbourg is quite different to getting up at three o'clock in the morning to milk the cows, isn't it? Yeah, when, when I first got elected, they, they, they pictured me on a bale of straw uh, and then they sent me up and down the escalators in Strasbourg to Bolero, you know, and it's so I'd been sort of plucked from the farm uh, straight into the European Parliament, but it wasn't quite like that. But it was different, as you know, and, of course, it was fascinating in the end chairing an agriculture committee with 27 countries. You know, you try and please some farmers in one, one county, uh, you try and please farmers uh, across 27 countries um, and 27 different... Systems. It's very, very interesting and uh, a great challenge. I, I enjoyed it, even though very difficult. I remember on the first day, there, mm. listening to you, and you did go in with quite a strong Eurosceptic frame of mind, didn't you? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Did you stay that way throughout ten years there? Because a lot of people, a lot of people go mm. and they become intoxicated by yeah. the power the chauffeur-driven cars, yeah. the expenses, the MEP's lifestyle. Did you become more pro-European in that time? But a little bit, perhaps, but mm, I managed... I thought so. I managed to keep... But <laughs> no, I managed to... No, I, I... But seriously, I did also manage to keep the scepticism, because although when it came to the referendum, um, I voted Remain and campaign Remain, but, yeah. but I still... Something could, happened to you, Neil. Yeah, I don't know, but I could still understand why um, people didn't want the rules, the regulations and everything with it. But as far as I was concerned, um, sort of farming in this part of the world, um, there was no doubt that there was uh, within, you know, the, the European system... Somehow. And farming was literally split 50-50, wasn't it? I it mean, was. farming was I think, I think farmers were roughly voted in a very similar the, the, way, the, the way to everybody. And, I, yeah. and I would argue with farmers sitting around a table, if you vote for, for, for Brexit, you will be worse off. And they'd roll their eyes and say, you're probably right, but we're voting for it anyway. Um, so, so that was the end of the argument. But I think, you know, we, what we need to do now is, I mean, what, what I am is a Democrat. And at the end of the day, I lost the argument. We got out. And, but we are not making Brexit work are we? We're not producing the food we should be doing. No. We're not actually controlling our borders properly. We're not actually looking at... He the sounds more Eurosceptic than me now. <laughs> we, are not, we, are, we are not looking at the food and the imports that comes in from Europe, and yet they're checking all of ours. You know, we're not going to get the protocol sorted out in Northern Ireland unless we actually do a little bit of checking ourselves. And, and don't worry, I was saying this in Parliament before I left. I mean, I, as yeah, you know, well, we'll when I chaired a select committee, well, we'll I didn't come take to any that. prisoners. No, we will come to you leaving Parliament. Parliament, I promise. Um, <laughs> I rather thought you might. <laughs> of course, did your ten years yeah. as an MEP, got this absolutely plum seat, you know, safe Tory country, Tibbs and Honiton, massive Conservative majority. You, in Parliament, did what you've done in the European Parliament. You got involved in agriculture, rural affairs. I'll give you credit for one thing. You stuck to that great rule. You only got involved and spoke publicly about things that you actually understood. And it's a shame it's that... A, it's a rarity. Well, it's a rarity, because actually, <laughs> you had a career before yes. going into politics. You knew about something. Yeah. Most MPs don't seem to know very much at all to me. And it was all going swimmingly, Neil, for you. It was all going very well, and you probably, you know, could have stayed on as the MP for that constituency as long as you'd wanted, in effect. And then these rumours started to swirl in the media that somebody might have been watching inappropriate pornography on their phone in the House of Commons. I wasn't sure it was true. But in the middle of all of this, you were interviewed mm. on GB News by our political editor, Darren McCaffrey. I want to remind you of that interview, if I may. Mm. We're going to show... Chief Whip is looking into them from a, from a female minister about uh, another conservative front bencher watching pornography on his, on his phone. Uh, I mean, frankly... Whoever it is, I mean, surely they would have to have the whip removed, wouldn't they? 
I, you know, I don't think there's necessarily a, a huge culture here, but I think it does have to be dealt with and dealt with seriously. And I think, you know, that's what um, the whips will do um, in our whips office. Well, that was Neil Parrish, big interview, saying whoever it is, when they catch the culprit, they've got to come down on a time. Neil, that was not your greatest moment, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I was, um, you know, I, I was in denial. Um, and, you know, if I could replay and not have done that, um, I would do it a thousand times. You know, I, I wouldn't... You said it was an error. Yeah, it was a total error. Um, I, 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 t I took the right decision. Uh, I left. If you'd um, fessed up earlier, could you have saved your career? I don't think so. Um, I think uh, it was they were sort of you know it, it was it was the wrong thing to do, the wrong place to do it, um, and and it was absolutely uh, the right thing to go. Uh, but you know, have I regretted it? You know, would I have apologised? I do un unreservedly. So, but like I said, what I want to do now, um, as you move into twenty three, is yes, I made a terrible mistake. Yeah, I mean, how but did move you? On. How did you? I mean. I can assure you, I've had some pretty tough times with the press over the years. Repeated tough times yes. with the press. And I always thought at the end of it all, and, you know, some of the stuff they wrote was completely untrue, some of the stuff they wrote was unfortunately true, but you always think about it, all right, listen, you know, I've put my head over the parapet in public life, I can deal with it. Yeah. But the impact on the family is, I think, quite difficult, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, how, I mean, how did you know, cope with if it there all? was one hero of the piece, it was definitely my wife. Um, she's only about five foot tall, but my goodness me, you know, she is determined. Um, and she said, she said about me that I've, I've every emotion in in her in her, in her whole body, I have, you know, as a have um, I've had that effect upon her, but the one thing I've done is never bored her. Um, and so, <laughs> oh, I'm uh, sure of that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and, and so, I don't want to ask some know, of the uh, details. Uh, so, so therefore, you know, I, mean, I, I play a huge tribute to Sue uh, because she supported me through all my political career, yep. um, and it was one which it was actually a good political career where I did work very hard uh, for my constituents and for farming and food. So, you know, it's a stupid way uh, and a very bad way way to finish but like so can i say now in public uh, if i hadn't had my wife's support through it and and what we do have even now uh, all being well uh, as my mother would always say a good marriage and in, may, in many ways that is more important than a political career however painful it might be uh, to leave it behind you could neil have just gone back to the farm and and just carried on farming which you obviously love doing yeah i do anyway but you've decided not to hide under a rock. You've decided, and in fact, you were arguing quite passionately on political issues earlier. Is there a second coming of Neil Parrish in politics? I will have to see, but I, I, would, I would hope there might be. Um, will people forgive me? I don't know. Um, and I have, to, you know, I have to ask that in all sincerity. Uh, but I think, you know, that the, the producing food, you've got, you've got the Ukrainians being invaded by Putin. You know, it's not Russia, it's Putin. Um, you've got, you need food. You've got North Africa starving, if you're not careful, because they get their wheat from the Ukraine. We need to produce more food. We can have a good environment. We want to get, you know, I, I, want, to ha I want to, somehow I want to create a revolution where we actually have home rule, for, for Devon, Somerset, might even talk to the Cornish. Uh, but oh, I'm, impossible. I, but, 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 you know, it, it, that, that would be more difficult. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, I think, you know, we, we've not had a fair deal in the West Country for years. And, and I'm not just saying this now because I'm out of Parliament, because I said it when I was in Parliament. I used to say, I, many a debate, I said that many of the civil service and many of the government think that Bristol is the South West and there is nothing beyond it. Um, you know, we, all the way from Bristol to, to, to of Cornwall was a very long time, a long way. And Devon is a great county. Somerset's a great county. We've got great counties of the West Country. Um, and I think, you know, we deserve better. No, I think we need to deserve better on education and health. But we also need to have that great food because, you know, people come to this part of the world as tourists. They like to eat our we food. We want our cream tea. You do. Absolutely. And we want to make sure we put the, the cream on the scone first. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, well, ever, don't ever have that. On it first, you see. When we um, go down to Cornwall <laughs> and do a show in Newlyn, which we're yes. going to do, they'll disagree very, I know very they strongly will, with that. And, and Cheryl Murray and I disagree <laughs> hugely. Final thought. Real feather in your cap. Robert Mugabe, 
banned you from entering Zimbabwe. Very, very well done you, Neil Parrish, on that, on he that point. He did not like my, my analysis of his election, you know, his corruption, um, his forcing people to vote and, of course, you know, destroying a country. And, of course, before I left, Putin did actually ban me from Russia as well. Well done. So I had a couple of... Well, those. on that note, Neil Parrish, we'll say thank you for coming on Talking Pines. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK.